DJ Nubis. And this is DJ Neko. Here with the Meltdown Radio Podcast. Here with special guest, Leather Leone. Woo! From hey, the guys. band Leather. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you taking the time to Absolutely. do this. Absolutely. I appreciate you hooking up with me. So uh, you were out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Is that correct? No, no, no. Not anymore. From, okay. It's funny. Everyone related me to the Chastain thing. I'm from upstate New York. Okay. Like by Niagara Falls, the Canadian border. And then I went to oh, school wow. outside of New York City. I say college very loosely. And then I moved out <laughs> to San Francisco and then I hooked up with Justine. So I go looking backwards. You are traveling <laughs> around. Traveling. Yeah. And now my band, they're in Brazil. So I'm uh, yeah. So yeah, you were definitely part of uh, Chastain back in the day. Um, you also were part of a group called Rude Girl. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. You've done your homework. Yeah. Rude Girl, when I moved to San Francisco, um, I was just bored and I knew somebody out here and I knew that I wanted to sing, but I, j I just didn't know what to do. And I don't know how much confidence I had. And um, I don't know, you might be old enough, but back in the day when somebody wanted something, they would put a poster on a telephone pole. Singer wanted, drummer wanted. Yeah. And yeah. I saw that someone, a rude girl wanted a singer. So I just went and auditioned and that's how it started. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I remember, uh, I think, and it might be something that caught on later too, was um, <laughs> this band was having a hard time getting people to come to their show. So they basically named their band Free Beer. So they put those posters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people did that. Yeah, so oh, I think no. that just kind of took off and yeah. people just kind of borrowed yeah. that as a way to get Yeah, or they would make stuff. some sexual innuendo. Oh, God, yeah. Telephone yeah. calls. It was all telephone calls. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, the roots that you have are in traditional heavy metal. Um, what was it that kind of kicked off your love for metal to start with? Ronnie James Dio. I, when I moved here, um, I had been, I was in cover bands and it was like more into the rock and roll thing, Heart, James Gang, you know, stuff like that. And then when I auditioned for Rude Girl, I sang the Annie Wilson version of rock and roll, Zeppelin. And the drummer looked at me at the time and said, do you know who Bon Scott is? And I said, yeah, she goes, try to sing like that. And I couldn't, but I can remember the connection and ooh, that I really, really wanted to. And then they turned me on to Dio. I was a late Dio bloomer, 82, 83, and it was done. I just, it just went inside of me. I'm like, yeah, this is what I want to do. And I, I couldn't, my voice wanted to go there, but I, I didn't do it properly at the time. So I probably sang in a studio for like a year before I went out, before I could figure it out. Yeah, that's the one thing I always loved about Dio, sort of like Ozzy or some of your more iconic singers. They always had this unique voice. So a lot of times it's hard to kind of match that. I, yes. did, I did hear a band, and I don't know if you're familiar with it, called Dream Child, and they have a singer. No. Right now. They have a singer that sounds a lot like Dio. It's kind of cool. Yes, and I got to tell you, as a young singer, it's a joke because I sound nothing like him. But I, I did try doing that, and I don't. I, I think everybody does it as a young singer, but you have to go after your own sound. Who wants to sound like? I mean, there's one Dio, you know. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's one that's one thing that we really uh, have remorse for is we never got a chance to yeah, see him live. We never got to see him live. Away I'm, I'm sorry. Um, watch his live stuff on YouTube. I got to tell yeah. you, I knew him and I, he was such a blessing. And I'd hang out backstage and he was a little older and he would freaking just, this little fucking man, he would just blow. And I I, I was around him many times when he was, his voice was tired. You know, he, he would just he was magnificent. He and I used to say to him, I used to be like such a fangirl, and like the, the aura, the thing that you do, it's so mad. Yeah. But he was great. He was amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. that's great. Um, so how did you end up hooking with Chastain? How, how did that matchup happen? <laughs> um, I had been in Rude Girl, and again, like we were discussing before this, it uh, it was kind of a you know to be a chick back then. Everyone looked at you, looked at you, looked at you. So uh, we were talking to CBS and Shrapnel Records, which is my friend. Um, a lot of things were going on. Again, it was, they wanted to put us in like military uniforms and freaking have me take my clothes off. And anyway, the rude girl thing fell apart. And Mike at this time, I have to tell you, and again, back in the day, you guys, when I first moved here, agents, booking people, labels, they came looking for you. They would go to shows to scout. It was amazing. So, um, I had met people 
and hooked up with Mike Varney during this time when we became really good friends. I literally talked to him on the phone, him and his wife every day. And so when the rude girl thing fell apart, I literally went home that afternoon and called him like a bawling freaking baby uh, that it didn't work out. He goes, you know, I think I have something for you. So I would say within three to four months, I was recording Mystery Evolution. Back then again, we got little four tracks and mm -hmm. I went in my friend Jesse's bedroom with Mike Varney and I recorded um, Winds of Change, Mystery Evolution, and maybe Black Knight. And, and again, why did Chastain want to work with a female back then? I think maybe it was the keys that he was writing and I'm not quite sure, I have to ask him. But, um, and it just worked out. So it was through Mike Varney. I'm sorry, I'm over here eating a pastry. Yeah, it was through Mike Varney. Hey, eat a pastry, I'm drinking yeah. some wine. You, you gotta get that food in. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Rude Girl, though, um, I'm just kind of curious here. When you guys formed, uh, was this was this after the Runaways? Like, was there an influence there with that because of that, or was it just something separate? No, of course it was way after. Um, no, no, no. But oh my god, it's so interesting that you say that because when I was in a cover band in New York, they were called the Test Tube Babies, and I did backgrounds. <laughs> I did backgrounds for this guy, and we got a show at the Last Chance in Poughkeepsie, which is still there, fucking amazing, opening for Joan Jett. And in the 80s, we all had her, we all had her haircut. And I kind of looked like her when I was young. Um, I met her, she was marvelous. I can remember her saying to me, you might want to change your look a little. And we laughed. Um, no, <laughs> no, no, you know, back then I had I had no influences. I just I just wanted to rock. You know, I listened to to uh, Zeppelin and Boston and no, um, I always knew of Joan Jett and I thought she was cool as hell, but no, I can't really say that. And I, and I was so into, I didn't want to do the old girl thing. I just wanted us to be looked at as not girls, but obviously we were, so. Right, but no, right, no right. runaway stuff, no. Well, I do have a small, like, 20-second clip of a song from Chastain I want to play for people okay. just who aren't familiar. It, it's called Angel of Mercy. I really enjoy it. Oh, best song you ever wrote. <laughs> That's a beautiful Ooh, song. It's a great song. Beautiful song. I just looked at it. You know, yeah. When I listened to that, all I think of is that I didn't know how to sing it back then. I sing it now. Yeah. You're probably you're probably like your best, your own worst critiquer, you know. You're, you're like your own worst critic, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I know it sounds pretty wrote. damn good to me. So <laughs> <laughs> and I was just I was just so green in the studio. But yeah, that's one of the best songs he ever wrote. I actually thank him for that all the time because I have to tell you, when I play that song live today, people flip out. In my Brazilian band, they just go crazy. And then, yeah, yeah, it's a good song. I knew that was on Ruler of the Wasteland, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I knew when he sent me, I knew, because Ruler of the Wasteland was a really big record for us. I knew. I'm like, Mother of God. Yeah. I thought I made it. This is it. This is it. <laughs> Well, you know, that just shows how tough it was even back then because, you know, you had all these bands, especially with the rock bands that are out there, and you're trying to break into that that mainstream a little bit to get noticed, and it's hard. It was hard. No, Chastain was never trying to break into the mainstream. Oh, Chastain, really? He didn't give a shit. Excuse my French. We got offers all the time, big tours, big labels. He wanted to make his own music, make his own money, didn't want anybody telling him what to do. Oh, wow. Um, and I certainly respect him for that in a, in a sense, but you know, he never wanted to play the game. And now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, oh, wow, that's yeah. actually a pretty cool point because I, you I know, said, usually that's the one thing they want, but that's, that's interesting. Didn't want it. That's and awesome. I always did, you know, we, yeah, yeah. But, but, but I, I, was really that too, I mean, sure. we were really successful. I was making a little bit of money touring everywhere. No, he had no desire to break, as they say. He didn't care. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Uh, now you did. You were with the band for a little while, and then you left, or you know, you, you were parted ways for a little while. Uh, did you do any other projects, or were you doing no. something else during that time? No, and it's so bizarre when I talk about that. Jesus, it was what nineteen ninety one. I just went away, and again, Justine and I talked. We had no meeting. We had. 
I don't know. We just, his idea and my idea just started becoming really different. And for those who dare it was, oh my God, it was on a major label. And I just wanted to tour. And again, we started getting all these major uh, uh, deal offers and tour offers and it was his decision and it never happened. So I don't really know. We just said goodbye one day and my plan, um, I lived in California. I had a great boyfriend. I had a great house. And I said, I'm just going to go to California, just drink champagne and party for six months. And then I'll get back in the game. And at that time, that's when the, the extreme uh, vocals were kind of really hitting, right? And I, I, I tried to, <laughs> first of all, you guys are so great. You're making me think of all this stuff. So I went to LA. Back in the time, there were so many labels. And people, the labels did respect me, so I could have meetings. And I don't really remember even what label it was, but it doesn't matter. But I went in to talk to the executives, and they're like, oh, you're amazing, blah, 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 blah. And, and they had the audacity to say to me, you're an amazing talent. You're a great front, front woman. But this is the problem. When people walk in and see you, they want to be you, but they don't want to fuck you. And I was like, I'm going to go. I mean, I was like, wow, really? So I can remember kind of just laughing. And then I went home. Um, I didn't do this to be famous. I don't need to. They wanted me to be poppy or be sex. Dude, I... I don't come, I'm just, I don't have that personality. It's my way or no way, you know, nobody was interested in leather as she was. So I went home and I started trying to audition for these more extreme bands. They all laughed at me. And I used to say, fuck you. And I used to send them the seventh of never. Um, <laughs> so then I just, you know, I don't know. Looking back now, I should have really kept going, but whatever. I don't regret it. I, I don't really have a lot of fight in me. And I was by myself and I'm like, hey, that's cool. I was really proud of what I had done. I said to Chessie, hey, at least we're in the history books. So yeah, I walked away for a long time. You mentioned uh, off, off air that you had been uh, in with animals and stuff like yes, that? Yes, I totally got into uh, animal uh, medical stuff and I met my first pit bull and uh, I fell in love and I just started really getting into pits and rescuing them. And yeah, so that took out my whole life for years. Yeah, we're, uh, we're big animal fans uh, we're too. We're huge <laughs> animal rescuers, like just... constantly at one point we had a whole like cattery <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's hard to stop collecting them but yeah yeah i, I stopped doing everything and the, the, i do have regret about that that i kind of lost touch with dio and i didn't realize he was sick and then when i found out he was sick then he was gone like a few weeks later so but yeah and it wasn't like social media back then right you guys and chastine would always write me letters or call me and say you know you really you're so good you need to be doing something and i was like yeah whatever you know yeah. So during your time, like back then, were any were there any tours or bands that you really enjoyed touring with? Like, what were some of your favorites? Uh, with Chastain, we only really did local local bands. Um, okay. Of course, I I played with Kiss and Cooper a couple times, which was awesome. But yeah, we just did local bands. Yeah. No, no major stuff. As far as I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we really just did the club circuit, and we had local bands. I mean, of course, we did like Manila Road, and. Um, CJSS, but yeah, it was it was main, mainly our shows with like whoever was local. That's cool. Yeah. So did you like just stay mainly? This was in California, right? The tours with Chastain. Yeah. Yeah, we did the country over. We just okay, did the US. okay. All over America. He, again, he never. No, she, to they would be. You'd have like local support, and it would be exactly your, whatever, whatever town we were in. Yeah, and Chastain never wanted to leave the country, so we never did. Oh wow! Okay. Hey, it was his band, you know. Yeah, yeah. And the I was little, just, the little you know, rules was, you got to follow. <laughs> yeah, I was along for the ride. I don't know. You know, I was just, I was so flighty and I still am. It's like we were touring all the time and I was making records. I'm like, cool, great. You know, I didn't sit around going, God, I wish we could do that. I mean, we were busy all the time. It was great. Yeah, you sound like you really enjoy the touring life. It's really something you enjoy. Dude, I love not knowing where I am. Um, back in Chastain, I used to be so tired that I would start singing the wrong song to the music and the, <laughs> the, the crowd would correct me. Yeah. I, I love the, the spontaneity. I, I love real life, you know, live. I love it live. What happens the way you sound, you know, interacting with people. Yeah. I really like it. Awesome. I love traveling too. Like I have to travel a lot for my for work. And I mean, I can understand like just yeah. the idea of going place to place and then you just wake up and, you know, do your show. Yeah. It's amazing. And somebody knocking at your door, you have an hour. Okay. You know. <laughs> I'm ready. I swear. 
Well, one thing uh, about your newest release, uh, We Are the Chosen, is I'm I'm just like blown away by how strong your voice is. And when I was going back and listening to some of the early Chastain stuff, it, it, you're just as strong now as you were back then. So I'm kind of wondering. Some singers have like rituals they do to keep their voice in top <laughs> shape. Is, yeah. is there anything you do? You know what? But but I, but I also really need to be fair with that question because everybody asks me is that. I gave my voice a rest for 25 years. A lot of these people have not. Um, do I have a ritual? Yeah, I drink wine. Um, no, no, no. And it's That's funny. That one like, does. I'm, I'm actually going to do, I'm actually gonna do a video about that. Um, I work out. I do cardio um, to get my heart rate up. Um, I uh, sing. Uh, it voice. It spe speech level. Uh, and I, the two hardest things for me is sleep sleep and water. Um, I don't like to drink water. I do espresso and wine. Um, but I read a thing about Frank Sinatra one time, you guys, he always said before touring, before a record at five weeks, he stopped everything. That's exactly what I do. Um, I try to sleep, you know, it's a muscle that needs rest. A lot of times when I'm on the road, I won't even do my own sound check because I'll just get a 20 minute nap and it'll help. But, I, but I'm really blessed. I just, you know, I work it out like any other muscle and I'm really blessed. All right. Well, have you ever passed through Baltimore? I was just in Baltimore way? for my niece's wedding. Oh, no kidding. Really? In, uh, in Edgewater, I was outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's right down by Annapolis. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, Annapolis was great. Is that where you guys are? Well, we're a little bit north little from bit them, but like, we're like maybe we're right 30 minutes from there. Yeah. I, had so, I had a lot of fun there. Um, I used to, is Hammerjack still there? No, they they so, remade it. Okay, but, so uh, Hammerjacks is weird because the original Hammerjacks was destroyed to make the Raven Stadium. Oh, really? And then they tried to bring it back, and then they moved it elsewhere, and that failed. And recently, they tried to reinvigorate Hammerjacks, and I don't think it went anywhere because it was around COVID time. So yeah, it was kinda like. So they're they're trying to keep Hammerjacks, but it was when did the Ravens come to Baltimore? Ninety five. Ninety eight, I think. So like yeah, yeah, in yeah. the nineties, <laughs> if you would drive down Interstate ninety five and you'd look over to downtown Baltimore, you would see that gigantic oh. Hammerjack sign. And this is great because they built the stadium right next to the uh, baseball stadium. Yeah. They had to demolish Hammerjacks to create space for the stadium. And, you know, I keep forgetting COVID messed everything up. I mean, there's so many clubs here in San Francisco that never reopened and they're just kind of getting back on their feet. There's but yes, if I ever come to Baltimore, I'll look you up. There's a small Yeah, we have a club. two good club. We have well, we have Soundstage and uh, Ramshead, so they're both yeah. like right next to each other. So yeah, and that's where cool. a lot of places come through. There's a small um, club called the Sound Sidebar, which sidebar? is Sidebar. It's right across the street too from. Uh, I love those too big for that. No, I'm just <laughs> I'm just piggybacking off of something she's saying about things. You never know. But... I, I have a hard time in the states. I always have. I think that's why when I, this promoter got in touch with me in 2014, I just jumped at the chance. I mean, Brazil, South America is a whole different game for me. Well, the reason why I mentioned the like, if you are passed through here, sure, we'll have you. We have room for you too, and a band. But uh, she's a wino, so like, I don't want you. To, I don't want you to just appear for a couple of days. You know, she'll take you to all the wineries and stuff. Do you do white or red? Both. Yeah, right, right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's already got it. <laughs> um, so we talked a little bit again off air a little bit that when I mentioned how back in the day you were one of the few women front men out there. Uh, and, and I know from the metal scene, because you know, I grew up in that time too, that like women weren't necessarily taken super seriously as musicians. But I think over the last 15 years, we're seeing a lot more women fronting more extreme bands and stuff. And that is becoming... Well, they're kicking ass, dude. Right, I'm right. Like, I, I heard Tatiana from Ginger. I'm like, hello. Yeah. It's so funny. I don't do extreme music, but I'm so freaking into it. Arch Enemy, Ginger, Lamb of God. I just discovered Kubla Khan. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> I love it. And that was the one thing I got to tell you. When, when I went to do this record in Poland with Vinny Tex, I said, look, you guys. 
I would try to do extreme. Of course, they wouldn't let me. Um, but but, I, but I'm like, I need extreme metal drums. I want you to fucking play like a lamb of God. So that was really important to me to have that aggression in it. But oh, I, yeah, I, 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 I hear that in your album. Yes, yes. The women approve themselves. And again, you know, I, God, I never thought about that crap. Everybody brings it to my attention now. I never. But I got to tell you, the one thing that I did enjoy is I used to like helping the roadies, you know, I would carry in the guitars and the cymbals or whatever. And I would hear people go, oh, that's so cool. Look, they have a female roadie. And then I'd be like, yeah, come here, motherfucker, for a sound check. Let me show you the female roadie. So I always just really, I always just really worked on my voice and my craft, you know, to prove it. I mean, I, I didn't care. But, you know, you know, you want to try to sing this? So, yeah, I just kind of had an attitude about that. And I think it was okay because I was good enough. But it's funny, you, listening to the old Chastain, I sounded like a 12-year-old girl. Um, I think the beauty of my voice now is that my voice has dropped. Mike Varney from Shrapnel Records said my balls have finally dropped. Um, I, I, wa I couldn't sing in these keys properly back then, and now I can, you know, I've tuned down a little. And, but yeah, thank you. I, th I think this new record is really amazing for me, to me. Oh, yeah, I love it a lot. Uh, what When you wrote it, uh, who all contributes to the writing process. Is it's it just me and my guitar player, Vinny Tex. We, okay. uh, pre-COVID, um, I did a big Raven tour and then I had um, my friend that we lost. We were gonna do a Grim Reaper tour and that fell apart. And I was kind of in musical chaos, hence kind of where the record came from. Then I really didn't know what I was gonna do. Everybody kind of walked away and my guitar player, Vinny Tex stayed in touch with me and he said, hey, let's just try to write, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I could write a whole record you know, with a guitar player, but of course I could. And we had two years and he, uh, he's such a blessing to me. He, he just, he's a fan, you know, he loves my voice and he writes for my voice. He doesn't want to shred. He doesn't want to overdo anything. Um, I argued with him every day um, about his ideas. Uh, stop, stop telling me what to do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But, but he was right, you know, I think he modernized the sound. So it's me and Vinny, and I hire touring bands, you know, as I go. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> with the new record, like, it's kind of funny because uh, as far as the overall sound, I mean, it almost reminds me a lot of, like, Classic Priest or something Ooh. that was done off Firepower, you know? Like, it's just so strong. Like, I really... Yeah, thank like you. It. I mean, it's in your face. I w and, you know, this was also the first time that I was begin at the be from the beginning to the end. Usually I was like Ozzy Osbourne. I would walk in and do my parts and say bye-bye. Let me know what it sounds like. But um, I really learned a lot with this record. I really learned how hard it is. So funny. I thought I was like one take, one take bitch. You know, I would walk, no, honey. And all these people that say it, no, honey, it's not the way it goes. But I really learned, you know, the process that Chastain had to go through. And, uh, of course, I don't use auto-tune. But, you know, there's a lot of things that you have to uh, really concentrate on. And I learned a lot to kind of control myself. Uh, I, I don't like the studio. Uh, like, like we were talking about previously live, I feel contained and claustrophobic in a studio because I move too much and I chew gum and I drink soda. Um, it's really, really constraining for me. So, you know, for me to create that stuff, it's really hard. But yeah, it was good. And I, I had more time. The chest chain record used to be like, okay, you have 10 hours to do 12 songs. It used to be like that. You know? But now I actually had a budget. So, I mean, I did a song a day, you know, it was beautiful. And it was, it, it hurt studios in Poland, which is the land of behemoth, bait or hate. I mean, ah, it's yeah. in their blood. So they just made me sound amazing. Now you had done, um, cause you did have a solo record uh, way back when too, right? Uh, Shockwaves in 89 and 2 in 18. Okay, yep. Yeah, was is there, is there another reason for the gap or is this because you were still doing whatever you want? You, you know, know, Shockwaves <clears throat> came about, as Chastain says, I kind of don't remember, uh, that I was complaining at the time, which I still do, why I wasn't as big as Doro and Rita Ford. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm good enough. But you I got that keep, voice. Yes, you do. I keep my clothes on, right? And again, it was the 80s. So I got to tell you, I, I realize now that Road Racer, who is now Road Runner, wanted to sign us for to do for those who do it. And I think Chastain just made it as a prerequisite. You let Leather do a solo record. They did nothing with it. It's amazing to me. Now it sells. It did nothing back then. But it was cool. It was the first time that I actually did my own melodies. Most of the record is mine. Um, my own melodies and my own lyrics. I, you know, I still like that record. I can't listen to a lot of stuff that I do, but I think Shockwave is <laughs> 
my voice was in such phenomenal shape back then. Um, and then Leather 2 came about because I was touring with these guys and we were like, hey, let's make a record. It was made very fast. Um, and there were way too many cooks in the kitchen. Again, I'm so grateful for it. And I tried to do the really raw, like bar sound. I kind of failed at that. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it's all good. But you know, I really, I really actually consider this my first solo record because it's really mine. It's mine. I did it. My stuff. Yeah, uh, I actually first heard this back around Christmas, and I do like what's a weekly top five albums of the week, and yours uh -huh. made number two on my list. So, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. But I'm gonna give the people a taste of that right now. I do have another 20 second clip for you. My favorite song from We Are the Chosen. This is called Always Been Evil. Oh, yeah, this is Woo! I love that song too. What it has, I'm That's always been a big favorite for people. Um, not mine so much. <laughs> well, actually, I could go with just about any track on his record. It's so it's good. It's a really great album. It is. Thank really. you so much. Yeah, I mean, we had the time. And like I said, I'm, I'm just crazy. And Vinny Tex, my guitar player, I, I love you, I adore you. Um, he, he's like a Leo, and he's just, you have to be patient. You have to relax. Don't tell me to relax, motherfucker. But he really, and we had the time again. We would work on something. It wasn't working out. We would put it away. And I would be like, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And he'd be like, no, no, I want to try something different. So he really taught me a lot. He's so amazing. And we're actually going to start writing again. And I'm like, oh, my God, do I have to do this with you again? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's like the writing process is a bit frustrating but the final product is a wonderful yeah well most of it really comes together but he's of the mind we can do better we can do better we can do better and like so i'm kind of lazy go no no no, that's good but like i said he's always right <laughs> so is it because there's one thing that neck and i kind of laugh about we saw a doc a while back about uh number of the beasts with iron maiden and uh yeah. producer at the time bruce was saying yeah, you know, he was really driving me crazy. He kept telling me, I need your good scream, Bruce. And so uh, is that what Vinny was doing with you? I need your good scream, Leather. Good scream. Yeah, and it's funny. It's funny. I can't be told what to do. Because it's, it's like, I do it, but you can't tell me to do it. Vinny would be like, oh, well, kind of, don't tell me how to sing, motherfucker. I've been singing for 100 years, you know? <laughs> But yeah, yeah. And when he would, he would say, make it, you know, can you write lyrics? Because of course he speaks English, but it's not that good because he's Portuguese. And he would have all these. So yeah, when someone pins me in a corner, because, you know, I've never been on a major label. I've never been told how to do something. So it was really a learning process. Um, and I'm just a, a, a diva when it comes to that. It, it's ridiculous. I should yeah. just be, that's, that's what my mantra for the new record is, calmness take it all in <laughs> enhance your calm <laughs> yeah but you know i don't do well when people tell me to relax and be patient i'm like a seven-year-old really <laughs> but he he's very calming and, and again he just he, he he just wants to do this stuff for my voice so it's really different for me to and i god bless chastain he's done so much for me but they were there were sort of guitar records you know guitar records and Vinny wants it to be about my vocals so it's really different yeah yeah now you mentioned this studio versus live thing. I know uh, since over the years the industry has changed in music a lot, uh, both with like people recording in studios and people just recording at home. They have you know these things on computers now. Uh, but then we have like promotion. You don't almost don't need a label anymore. You got streaming or downloading. Mm -hmm. How has all that affected you as an artist at this point? Well, I know the last few Chess Dan's record, we did just basically do them in his house. Um, it hasn't affected me because um, I am blessed now to, uh, I have to do everything long distance and this was my first big studio. I don't know, I don't, nothing affects me. Um, I just know that I had to get out there more. I, I had to embrace social media. Sometimes it gets a little frustrating because anybody can do anything. There's so much out there. I can remember thinking like that in the 80s going, there's so many freaking bands. But I, and, and I'm blessed because I had a cult following because I was one of the first women, you know? Yeah. Um, but Chastain really did a lot for me. So I don't, 
I don't really see it as a problem with me. Now, it helps me. It helps me. Yeah, you did do another record with him, right? Back in 14, I think? We did uh, Surrender to No One in 13, and then We Bleed Metal in 15, yeah. So is that still kind of something that's going on, or is it just whenever he feels like writing? <laughs> Justine and, and I have a joke. Every 20 years we get together. I don't know. We were actually talking about it again pre-COVID, but Justine is really comfortable and really... Um, you know, he works like his own music and his own label. I don't know. He's he's kind of done, you know. He always says to me, I don't know if I have another one in me. You know, why not? And and I think, honestly, I think he kind of does those things for me. It never hurts me to do a Chastain record. People, you know. Yeah. And when he got in touch with me in 2013, he said I had this material and I think it's a Chastain. And I said, we have to be as good, you know. We can't come back as these losers that can't sing and play anymore. Um, so yeah, but being with him is like, is like nothing. And yeah. actually he would say to me, God, he goes, you can actually sing in key more often now. And I'd like, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is the fastest record we've ever done. And oh my God, you can actually sing a harmony without any help. Oh so, my goodness. I, I adore him. I mean, it's only because of him that I'm here. So I never take him for granted. I mean, I, I love, I love his songwriting so much. I can tell you back in the day, I mean, I love Sabbath and Dio, and I, I was kind of into that type of rhythm. But Chastain didn't write that way. He wrote in these higher keys and kind of this European flamingo, flippy, flippy. But um, nobody was writing like that, so I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, yeah. are you touring currently for We Are The Chosen? Uh, I am working my ass off. I just, it was funny, we were talking about Arbor Saint. I just got a really big festival in Mexico in December. Arbor Saint will be there. Oh, called wow. Life, Life After Horror Fest, I believe. There's three days. The females are on the first day. It's like me, Vixen, Coven, Holy Moses. Um, oh, their new record is great. A, a lot of people. Uh, I think Kitty's playing. Uh, it's it's going to be sick. And I'm working on Brazil right now for October. Nice. Very nice. You know, and again, I, I, I know my place in metal. I know that I've been gone a long time, but I was on such a roll from 2014. And then freaking COVID hit and messed all of us up, right? Yeah. And I talked to a lot of booking agents, and they're like, there are huge bands way bigger than you that can't even tour. They're all trying to catch up, right, from all the money they lost, all the insurance that they lost. So they're trying to redo everything from 20. And I can remember saying to one of them, well, this is a great time for metal. I mean, just last week, there were five great shows in San Francisco. He goes, no. Nobody has any money. Creator played, Power Wolf played, the Crypto Death. Played. They're gonna go to one, you know. Nobody has any money. They're afraid to put money into it. So I bother people. I annoy people every day. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I can totally I'm a, I'm see that. I can totally see that. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Now I did read that uh, your dream is to kind of play walking. Uh, yeah. I think I think you all would be fucking fantastic. And I and I, I actually am in touch with the guy. It's like, dude, there are th fifty bands on this bill. I don't. That's what I say to people. I don't understand why you can't get me in the festival circuit. There's twenty freaking bands under the three huge ones. I don't, you know. But like I said, I'm annoying. I get their phone numbers. I get their emails. And some someone just the other day from, I don't know, maybe somewhere in Europe said we aren't interested. Stop. Oh my god. <laughs> Not gonna happen. No, we need to start. Yeah. We need to start a petition to get this going. I know, here. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's but if it weird. doesn't happen, we do have a fest next Ma uh, May, Maryland Death Fest. Yeah, and if you can squeeze your way into that, would be awesome. It's in May. Mm -hmm. It's Memorial next year. Day. It's Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, a year from now. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Maryland, Maryland Death, Death fest? fest. Oh, I think I've seen that. I might get booed off stage because I'm not a deaf person, but I'll well, no, they've been expanding. Eclectic. Yeah, over the years, like it started out as mainly death metal, but over the years, like the last five to ten years, they've started integrating a lot of different styles. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I would definitely, uh, and I have a year, so um, yeah, I would. I just really would like to do the festival circuit. Um, and again, I always feel like, dude, it's me, it's leather, and they're like, yeah, that's nice. Um, <laughs> You know, I, it's okay. I was gone a long time. I have to prove myself again, and I, I totally get it. And again, we're talking about social media. It's about social media numbers, which I'm really working on. It is, it's a different time. So social media, um, I just have to really work on it, you know? 
Yeah, yeah. And oh. we're the same way. We're still trying to figure it out. We are too. We're just like we just want to yeah. share. And people and are that's like, what I keep saying to my guitar player. Back in the day, you talked about music, not about you know getting my nails done or the new and, you know oh I'm on the beach, oh. so I have to get into that. To me, it's so uninteresting. You know, I mean, I didn't, yeah. I didn't yeah. want to. You, see have to, you have to mesh your life with your yes. music, and it's and people love it. People want to see it. People want to relate to you, and I love all of you for it. So so I'll get better. Yeah, I so I like I have a video of me pumping gas in my car. Hey, <laughs> people say, "Hey, man, can you uh, send me a link to that uh, album?" And I'm like, "Dude, back in my day, we had to make mixtapes and yeah, shit." Yeah, so. to record it. <laughs> oh shit! You're making me think. When I found out it was in my first magazine, my boyfriend at the time, I went in the back of his bike. We drove to a store in San Francisco. You bought the magazine, and he had the tapes. Oh my god! <laughs> we would send him back and forth, right from country to country. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's scary. It's great that everyone can, uh, um, you know, express themselves now, though. But again, I think I think the attention that you get now, I think music is secondary, which I have a hard time with. Um, people are more involved with you just as a person. You know, that's, it's the truth. And that's what we kind of struggle with, too, because that's what yeah. we're seeing. It's like, yeah we know so many wonderful people who are in bands or singers and we're like, we just want to share this talent. And then you yeah. see the things that and, become and popular and it's like, Oh, people want to see where they're, eat, where they're yeah. eating dinner. Um, well, it's voyeurism, right? It's the age of voyeurism. Um, and, and that's, and I feel like that's really taken off in the last maybe seven years. It hasn't, been that, that, yeah, it hasn't been that long because <clears throat> I, I think like, back i mean i was an early iphone adapter i was like yeah i have to have the smartphone i was first in line yeah and yeah it took him like six more years before he got a smartphone and like the rest of my family like a lot longer and I, now everybody i don't even i don't even, I don't even have I don't even the have one. tiktok i don't even have one yet. oh my god tiktok yeah i was going should i be on tiktok and they're all going no. Yeah, I don't no. know what to do with TikTok. I tried. I was Every, like, everyone, everyone wants to be famous to be famous, and God bless you. That's the age that we're in now. But you know, I just want to share my music with you. I think that's the most important. But like I said, I'll get better. I'm going out to dinner. I'll take a picture of my food. Yes. <laughs> yeah, simple things. You know, here's here's a picture yeah. of my dog. Okay. Yes. yes. So, I, do. I, I post a lot of pictures of me with my pits, and pe people love it. People love it. And then I post a video, and not so much. <laughs> music video, not so much. But it's okay. It's just something we need to learn to do. It's Big Brother, you know. We're all integrated. Yeah. <laughs> integrated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you talked about you and Vinny maybe already starting plans to start working on new material. Is there anything else that's going forward that you're working on that people need to know about? Uh, no, just follow me at leatherleone.com. Like I said, my main focus now is touring. Um, getting back in shape and touring and, you know, writing, we just kind of write all the time. And it was funny because he, he had lost a computer. So we just got it back. So we're going to go, um, no, just keep, you know, I'm just trying to get in the road. Like I said, I have a, a big festival in Mexico. I think it's called life after horror. It's this amazing thing. It's just like this big horror fest, three days of these booths. It's just going to be crazy. Awesome. Um, and again, like I'm working on, I can't say anything, but working on Brazil in October, I think I, I just have to get back out there and say, Hey, here I am, you know, you have to you have to be out there that's still the truth i think you still need to be touring like a rabbit you know well, you well that's one there. thing that we've learned the last decade and a half is that because of you know the days of napster and all this for bands such as yourselves to actually make any money you have to actually get it while you're live while you're playing because that's where yeah. you can play your merch and get your own money there yeah and, and get it out there i mean people you know people know who you are but they have to be hearing you and that was a drag about COVID that I haven't been able to get out right after the record, but it's, I'm good. So it's, it's all good. I'm good. Well, Leather, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Absolutely. I very appreciate it. Uh, just hold on for a moment. We're going to do our outro and then uh, okay. for the rest of you watching this, please go check our out, uh, Leather out, check out their new album, check out their past albums, check out their websites. It's a great band. Uh, she's an amazing singer. Uh, please go out and check her out. So, Hold on, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm.